Anyways, let me start off with the conceptual questions. I'm opening perplexity as usual. And, um, oh, library. <laughs> I'm just a little worried. Did I ask any weird questions? <laughs> I, I do know this is an account that I use for work, so I won't ask anything too weird, but <laughs> um, but anyways, um, I, I'll review it later, and if I see anything that uh, I can blur it out in the edit. I mean, so for the you know Zoom recording, you'll see whatever it was. For the version that goes on YouTube, I can blur it out. So this is our... Um, uh, conceptual questions about Lorentz transformation, and in terms of... Um, in terms of kind of the most challenging concepts of special relativity, that's really where this is at. So, um, so these are the uh, three questions. This last one is uh, a really challenging one. So, uh, so let's ask uh, uh, perplexity these questions and let's see how well it does. The first question is from the textbook. So um, it might not be as challenging as the ones that I've written, but let's see. Plus, but answer the next point, okay. B, C, D, E. Uh, let me ask and just think through the, uh, turn on the pro, ask and think through the questions. Suppose, um, so at a relativistic speed, so his clocks won't have slowed. Uh, he sees earthbound clocks having slowed. His length one have uh, gotten contracted. Uh, yeah, that's the basically the setup where he'll see Lorentz contraction. Uh, yes, they do. Um, so let's see. In the context of the relativity, moving it differ significantly by okay. Does he observe the yeah? He, no, um, right that because uh, it, it, his own clock is in his own rest frame. So his clocks run normally, good. Uh, what change in the rate of uh, astrophysics? Oh, that's wrong. Uh, so, um, so the first answer is wrong to say earthbound clocks are moving, ticking faster than his own. But the second part actually is actually, you know, it is the Earth that is moving relative to him and due to time dilation, moving clocks. From his perspective, those on Earth appear to tick slower. So that is correct. Um, I don't know why that, where the wrong first uh, um, sentence is coming from. Let me see. Length contraction. Um, uh, why is this even a reference? This is not about time dilation. Um, yeah, that's just the wrong reference altogether. Um, yeah, I, so I don't know where this wrong first sentence is coming from. But if I ignore it, but and just the second part, yeah, that, that is correct. Okay. Does he measure the length of his ship to be sure? No, because it, it, it is in its own, you know, frame. He's measuring the proper length. Um, does he measure the distance between two stars that lie in the direction of his motion? Very long description. To shorten, yes. Yeah. In fact, that's uh, um, how he gets to a distant star in a, a shorter amount of time. So imagine like uh, borrowing from the second part, you know, an astronaut is traveling to a star 10 light years away. From the astronaut's uh, reference frame, that 10 light years away shortens. So uh, it doesn't take him 10 years to get there. It takes him, I don't know, two years to get there. And the reason is because the 10 light years has a uh, lower end contracted to a length that's uh, shorter. Um, so yeah, shorter than what an observed length contraction, yeah, affects motion. Okay, do he and an earthbound observer agree on velocity relative to Earth? Yes. <laughs> they, yeah, uh, relative velocity is a quantity they both uh, agree on. Yeah, including invariance the line. Yeah, same relative velocity between. Yeah, yeah. Because you're comparing basically two frames. Now, if there's somehow a third frame that's moving relative to them, then that 
the third observer might see the relative velocity of those two to be different. That's the uh, rel relativistic velocity transformation that you know I'm kind of staying away from because <laughs> a uh, regular idea of velocity doesn't transform like a Lorentz four vector. But anyways, so uh, all good. I think uh, the B it gave a, a weird answer, but the explain like if uh, you just strike out this sentence, the rest is fine. Um, okay, so that's an easy question. Let's see how it answers the questions that I've written. Um, so this, um, well, I think this is a, a easier version of the question. So it should be, um, I think it'll answer it correctly. Returns, yeah, it does. Be. So as observed by an Earth-based observer, it should take a little bit more than um, because, you know, that's less than C. Um, for the astronaut, it should take less. Uh, I wonder if uh, perplexed will actually do carry out the calculation. It'll take more than 20 years, yeah. Little speed, slightly more, yeah. Slightly less, okay, that's good. Oh, wow, that is a... Uh, and it didn't do any actual explicit calculation. That's how, you know, a, a competent physicist should answer. Okay, less than, less than 20 years due to the effect of time dilation, which is a consequence of traveling at a significant time dilation means, pass slower for the astronaut, proper time, seven, yeah, so that's one way to answer it. Um, but let me ask a follow-up question. Uh, but the astronaut doesn't observe that his own clocks uh, have uh, slowed. So can you explain from the astronaut's own perspective how he or she, how eh, she, um, how she spent uh, less than 20 years to travel to a destination uh, of 10 light years, 10, uh, 10 light years away and back. So for this, you have to give a length contraction based answer. It's a fraction of 0 0.99c. Oh, he's. Ah, uh, it's fine. Is? No, I think, uh, yeah, it should have been her own clocks. Never mind. Uh, and I get to take due to the effect of, yeah. It's stuck on the time dilation. Uh, Uh, can you explain this uh, without time dilation? Again, uh, the astronaut's own clock doesn't appear to slow down according to her own observation. the same scenario above. Oh. It's a time delay. I, yeah, I, I don't know why. Um, let me give it a little bit of a more help. Um, uh, is, can you explain it based on Lorentz uh, contraction? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's easy. Uh, it's basically this. Apply this to that. Um, but, you know, generative AI doesn't actually, it, it doesn't reason the way we actually do. It's, uh, you know, it's a, a, a text completion model. Right? So it doesn't, it can't actually think. Yeah, well, I see that. Uh, this contraction is finite, it just states 
Appear contracted, she's stationary. It's the universal above, you're right, right, right. Okay, okay. Um yeah. Yeah, okay. To once I'm moving it would the measure this distance to yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah, so okay. I, I don't know why it took so many <laughs> back and forth to get there, but this is the correct explanation describing the astronaut's perspective. The so the, it's the universe that's moving, you know, back and forth. And uh, as the universe moves that way, the distance between the stars is contracted. So, yeah. Traveled in less time, according to one clock without... Ex yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. All right, good. That, that's the right explanation. Took long. All right, uh, let's do the last question. Um, and uh, let's see. <laughs> how it goes. I'm gonna clean up the paste job. Uh, 10 light years away at uh, V is equal to 0 0.99c and returning. Spending negligence. Uh, describe this journey as the astronaut would observe it. Particularly describe what the astronaut would observe as happening on Earth during the journey. Not to support the observation, you may assume that the astronaut has a, access to a magic telescope, call it Ansible. Um, that was in a like science fiction that allows for instantaneous communication. Um, so there's a relatively recent Ender's Game uh, science fiction that has uncivil and relativistic travel. And um, it's uh, and the way uh, relativistic travel and the uncivil communication is described in Ender's Game, it's uh, wrong. Um, and it's kind of a, basically a problem of, you know, how well can an English major understand modern physics? And uh, um, Orson Scott Card, as talented fiction writer as he may be, he's not a physicist, so he doesn't describe that correctly. Okay, uh, returning astronaut perspective. Okay, astronaut uh, to length. Yeah, oh, those are significant length contraction. Good. So. Um, Travel time much shorter. Observation, okay, yeah. Using an ansible of the earth as a, uh, the, yeah, that's wrong. That's what a lot of people think. And that's what the writer of Ender's Game, Orson Scott Card, imagines with a, is happening. But time dilation is symmetric. So when the, when the astronaut observes Earth, Earth's clocks run slow. So, um, so, you know, if it takes the astronaut one year to get to that distant star, by the time astronaut arrives at the distant star, Earth's time haven't actually passed a year yet, like maybe a month. So this accelerated pace is wrong. Earth-based clocks do not appear to tick faster, and processes do not appear to move more quickly. Yeah, once you're mentioning Doppler effect, you are actually not using observation the way we do. And with the Doppler effect, I think it's different depending on whether you are moving, you know, if this is Earth, depending on where, whether you are moving away from Earth or towards Earth, what you see would be different. While you are moving away, what you see would be uh, even slower than um, the observation would be because you are moving away. As you are moving back, uh, then things uh, speed up because uh, the, you are just, uh, if you ignore the, uh, the signal delay time. So this is a wrong answer. And uh, I'm disappointed. I thought maybe um, this newer version of um, generative AI would get that right. Yeah, and uh, uh, let me check these two references and I'll read the rest. Uh, physics close to speed of light, frame of reference, time dilation, uh, the time time on the first time. Um, yeah, but this doesn't describe um, what they observe of the Earth. Um, Yeah, nothing here about what they observe of the Earth. Again, this is wrong reference, I think. Yeah, you know, these links, they don't really correspond to the texts here. Um, all right, let's read the rest. Return journey, symmetry, yeah. Observation is symmetrical, yeah. Lorentz contracted, that's good. 
Earth's progress, Earth is... Yeah, that's again wrong. Uh, now, if they are just uh, looking at it with a telescope, now on the return journey, they might see things moving like rapidly. Um, that's kind of just the illusion because you are... Um, the light signal that's coming towards you, you are kind of catching up, you are um, moving towards it, so you are receiving it faster each time. But if you have uh, Ansible, something that allows you to observe what's at Earth simultaneously, then no, or Earth's events are again moving slower because of symmetry of relativity. Um, the direction doesn't matter. And um, this is just wrong in so many ways. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I'm disappointed that um, Perplex... I, I, so I don't have a very good um, hope that it's going to be able to work through special relativistic paradoxes all that well, but let's see. Yeah, I'll read the rest. Uh, Sir Clark would have ticked normally, yeah, from their own perspective, or progress. Uh, yeah, and so there's that question of... Uh, when they come back, eventually Earth does age significantly more. So it's the question of how. So the question of how is the part where Earth do, the event on Earth does um, progress faster that happens in the acceleration in the like a turnaround. So um, look at the model answer. I will say um, so what they are describing here and here, those are wrong. Just uh, wrong. And um, again, I'm disappointed. Um, yeah. Yeah, but you know, I, I guess I'm not all that surprised. <laughs> By the way, this I'm pretty sure that's from Czech, and that's this question, that's from one of my former students. And um, yeah, I actually can't access Czech; it's blocked from College Network. Um, but I, I wouldn't, I would guess the Czech answer to this question was wrong, because um, to answer it correctly requires correct understanding of special relativity. And that's rare, even among people who are okay with the physics, like, you know, engineers, a lot of them wouldn't answer this question correctly. It does take a, um, someone with a master's in physics <laughs> to <laughs> answer it well. And maybe even then, uh, not everyone with a master's in physics. So, okay, I think that's all the uh, questions. Um, I, I am disappointed that, uh, uh, it didn't answer this quite well, although, uh, and but I think the mistake that it's making with that, it's the same mistake it's making here, uh, assuming that, um, you know, in the kind of relativistic scenario, because the astronauts' clocks have slowed, that um, they think astronauts will see the clock of the Earth moving faster. No, it, it doesn't um, work that way.